Uh, today uh, we're initiating uh, and kicking off uh, our push for uh, permanent funding for the, uh, the Land and Water Conservation Fund. And the legislation that Mr. Uh, my colleague, Mr. Van Drew, from the Resources Committee will talk about is that. You know, it wasn't too long ago we were all engaged in a, in a, in a very important fight and struggle uh, to make uh, the reauthorization of the Land and Water Conservation Fund permanent. And we accomplished that. And a lot of that, that accomplishment was not solely the work of a very good bipartisan coalition here in, in Congress, but it was also the work of uh, people being the advocates that they are, the support that the fund has across this country, and the diversity of communities that came to speak to us about the importance, whether it was the first urban park in a particular neighborhood, where it was an addition of land to provide a buffer to protect sensitive and critical conservation priorities for a community, for a state, uh, and whether it was that important chip at the rock of climate change that the Land and Water Conservation Fund provides to the American people. And the, and the money utilized is from the extraction industry. And, and so that, that was a fight. And as time expired, more and more people became concerned. We had an opportunity in the negotiations of the public lands package at the end of the year uh, to insist on one thing going in, that the fund must be reauthorized and it must be permanent. And then we can start talking about other things. And that was accomplished. Again, not a singular act by anyone, but a collective effort on the part of many, many people in and out of Congress. Uh, so we're here today to take that next step because, uh, and I'm happy to be here with Representative Andrew, uh, who is uh, leading this next step. And this next step is uh, to get that permanent funding. And we will have those conversations as the discussions about permanent funding for the very important and urgent need of the backlog of maintenance needs in our national parks occurs. So too, the discussion of the permanent funding uh, for the Land and Water Conservation Fund will occur. They're not mutually exclusive, and I think, and I really believe that they're joined together, and that's the way we're going to go forward on this. Uh, I want to thank the Land and Water Conservation Coalition, the Trust for Public Lands, Nature Conservancy, Wilderness Society, and the League of Conservation Voters for their particularly effective efforts in getting the kind of bipartisan support that we had for the reauthorization. And now task two, and probably the most important step at this point, the permanent funding. That's what we're kicking off, that effort, to convince our colleagues to re-energize the American people, to make this a priority, and to get it done in this session. Uh, I wanna now turn this uh, discussion over to uh, a friend, new member on the Resources Committee. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Jeff Andrew, who uh, approached about wanting to uh, move forward with permanent funding, and uh, he will lead that legislation in the House, and we have companion legislation in the Senate. So we're, we're looking forward to this. We think we have a good opportunity. Can't be done alone, and there's no time to rest on any laurels about reauthorization on a permanent basis. The important part comes now, where we have a baseline in the, in, the, in the government of the United States budget that highlights, prioritizes, and profiles and gives significance to the Land and Water Conservation Fund. That's the goal. Uh, and and it, is, it won't be easy. Not everything is going to be a rosy picture. This administration's recommendation on the budget would practically to zero out the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Thanks to Betty McCollum and other people, appropriators, who puts, put, put back funding that is needed to keep the program going at the pace that it's at. But we're talking about enhancing that pace, reaching more people, affecting more communities, and utilizing that fund in such a way that it begins to make an imprint over and over again 
across this country to more communities that we can that are waiting for the opportunity to cut that waiting list and uh, extend the benefits of this fund to everyone. So that's it. Let me now turn it over to uh, Representative Van Drew. Uh, very happy to have him on our committee. Good addition and uh, very uh, much gratitude on my part for undertaking uh, what I think is a very important responsibility and that is to get us the funding and help us get the funding that we need for the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Mr. Van Drew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, before I move on, I just want to really thank, and I believe we all should thank, someone who has been proactive in all of these issues, someone who cares about our environment, our open spaces, uh, our natural resources, and someone who has shown real leadership in his own strong, powerful, yet quiet way. You know, when they say, speak softly, but carry a big stick, this guy carries one heck of a big stick, and that's our chairman. And let's just really hear it for the wonderful job that he's done. Because let, let me be clear, let me be clear, this is not going to happen without his help. We need his help, his advice, and his support. Um, I'd also like to thank my co-sponsor, uh, co-sponsor Fitzpatrick, Representative Fitzpatrick. Um, we have good bipartisan support, and that's what this ab is about. This issue is too big to ever be a Republican or a Democratic issue. It is an American issue. It is an issue about the future of our country. It is an issue about the future of our welfare. And I'd also like to thank Representative Huffman, uh, the chair of what we call WOW, for being here as well, um, for all his support. I just wanted to touch on a few things, and I do have some prepared remarks, and I, I hopefully will read some of them, but I just wanted to say, um, I don't want anybody going into this thinking we're almost asking for something more than we should get or asking for something that maybe we shouldn't have or asking for something that is too much. For multiple reasons, that is not the case. We are asking, quite frankly, what is due. And it is due because of the fact, yeah. thank you, because of the fact that when this legislation was put together, the idea behind it was we have the extraction industry that takes its toll on the environment, and yet at the same time, at least from the royalties, from the money that comes from that, from the leases, we would be able to go forward and create new greenways and open spaces and waterways and enhance our environment. And you know, this is the kind of legislation that isn't just for today or tomorrow or next week. This is forever. This is for our children. This is for our grandchildren. This is for the future generations. This is truly for the United States of America. Um, and that's why I'm so glad that it is bipartisan. At times people have asked me, you know, um, I, I guess you went to Congress to be a good Democrat. I hope I am. But it's, it's not about just being a good Democrat or a good Republican. It's about being a good American. This is what truly Americanism is about. And we're gonna, thank you. We're gonna have to fight hard. We're gonna have to work hard. We're gonna have to be persistent. Uh, sometimes, you know, you fail, sometimes you win, but you keep going until you do win and until you do prevail. And that is my intention. And I know the chairman's intention and the co-sponsors intention with this legislation. What is done here, quite frankly, is wrong when money is taken from an intended purpose. And I was talking with some friends a little while ago, and by the way, thank you all for being here. All of you have truly made the difference. It's your advocacy, and I don't want to forget that. But we were speaking a little while ago about how, you know, I spent a lot of years in the state legislature, seven, 17 years between the Assembly and the Senate. And so often, even in my home state of New Jersey, money would be taken from a given source that was actually earmarked for a given intention, that it was supposed to be used for a particular purpose, and it would be used for something else. Be clear, we're not increasing taxes. We are not increasing taxes. Don't let anybody, anywhere, anytime tell you that because of this legislation, you're gonna increase their taxes. All that we are doing is taking money that was indicated for this purpose and putting it in the proper place. And we need to do that. Um, 
the other areas I wanted to go over just a little bit uh, to mention, our open spaces are an important, important component of the natural infra infrastructure of outdoor recreation. So not only are we not increasing taxes, in the end we're going to bring in more revenues. That contributes, this open space contributes nearly one trillion dollars, a trillion a trillion dollars to our economy. It supports over 7.6 million jobs throughout the country, including in my home state, if I may just advocate a little bit, of 150,000 jobs. And in addition to the recreational benefits of this, um, the, these tools build resiliency as climate change exacerbates extreme weather events. So we all are, and we need to, approaching how we're going to deal with climate change. And there's going to be many ways, from the way that we zone, from where we build, to the type of energy that we use. This is one of the best ways to reduce your carbon footprint. This is one of the best ways to deal with climate change. When folks say, well, what are we going to do? We just don't know how to deal with it. Do this, Bill. That's the way to deal with it, is one of the most important ways. If you keep open space, if you keep greenways, if you keep waterways, then you're also going to help with climate change and all the challenges that it makes. So I want to thank everyone for being here. I think it's important that you are here. I think the advocacy is important, and we need your help. We're going to work like hell. We're going to make this happen, and we're going to continue to push. Um, I know we have some other folks here, too, that want to make remarks, but I would be absolutely remiss if we didn't have Representative Fitzpatrick, who has been a strong supporter across the aisle to show that we can do this together. Come on up. Yes, sir. Is he not the best dressed guy in D.C. Yep. or what? Yeah, Look at this guy, the pocket square and everything. Now, thank you all for being here. And to Jeff's point, uh, you really are the key to this. Environmental issues aren't limited to the environment. They are. They touch on national security issues. They touch on physical health issues. They touch on mental health issues. This is a, a all-encompassing movement here, and um, I think it's really, really important to know. And Jeff touched upon this. I think it was it was a complete disgrace that we even let this thing lapse to begin with. You want to talk about Exhibit A of the dysfunction? You let the Land and Water Conservation Fund not get reauthorized? That is unbelievable, and it's unacceptable. And thank God we did get that piece across the finish line, but the signs have changed from save the Land and Water Conservation Fund to fund it. That's part B of this, and that's a very, very important part. The Congressional Research Service, uh, who is a very, very credible source of information around here, says that only half of the money that's earmarked for this fund actually makes it to the fund. That's unacceptable, and that's really important. So what we need all of you to do, and like I said, it's important to have legislative allies for sure, and you have them here. But what we're asking each and every one of you to do is to find constituents in every single representative's district, have them go to the office and urge a member of Congress to not just to vote, to co-sponsor this bill. Not a single dime comes out of taxpayer money. It's all oil and gas royalties. It's also an economic engine. One out of every 15 jobs in this country is directly linked to this program. And it's relevant to saving open spaces. So I want to thank um, the um, all of our environmental coalitions, Tiernan and and, and not just the environmental folks, but the wildlife folks that have really formed a really exceptional coalition. I'm so proud to not just be a part of it, but to call them my friends. Um, and you have friends here, so we will, we're will. we gonna work very, very hard. I'm very confident we're gonna get this done, I really am. But let's not take anything for granted. Please be persistent and get that grass grassroots movement uh, uh, fired up, because that's what we're gonna need to get this across the finish line. Uh, with that, uh, Representative Huffman, who I've worked uh, across the aisle with on a number of uh, environmental That's issues. Right. Proud to call Thank you my you friend, Brian. sir. You got Man. it. Yep. <clears throat> well, thanks, everybody. Uh, Chairman Grijalva has made this a top priority. Jeff Van Drew may be a freshman member of Congress, but he's hit the ground running as an environmental champion. And Brian Fitzpatrick, uh, I know you sometimes take heat in your caucus for partnering with me on climate and Arctic protection and doing work like this. They should be writing you thank you letters every single day because what you're doing for the Republican brand is exactly what the American people want to see. They want to see that these environmental issues are nonpartisan and you've been a champion and a great problem solver and I'm proud to be working with you on this. Now. The Land and Water Conservation Fund, you know, since 1964, has been one of the most popular, most successful, best things that the United States Congress has ever done. 
There's just one bad thing about it, and that is it is chronically underfunded. We're here today to try to address that, to try to fix it and provide that permanent funding and certainty that this program needs and deserves. Um, you know, during this period, over 50 years, LWCF has done something that's so sensible. It's taking revenue from the depletion of our oil and gas resources, which belong to the public, and using that revenue to protect the uh, land and water that is also the uh, heritage of the American people. Preserving natural heritage, protecting landmarks, is not just good environmental policy. We can't emphasize this enough. It's good economic policy. The outdoor recreation industry, which Jeff Van Drew mentioned, uh, is a big, big deal. It's the cornerstone of many local and uh, state economies. It brings tourists from around the world to shop at local businesses, eat at our restaurants, stay at our hotels. In California alone, outdoor recreation drives $92 billion, $92 billion in consumer spending, provides 691,000 jobs. That is a big deal. Bringing it to my congressional district, I want to brag about the Smith River National Recreation Area. It is one of the most beautiful places you'll find anywhere. Uh, it is, for, for over 10 years, LWCF provided uh, critical funding for projects spanning thousands of acres to protect a main tributary of the Smith River. This river, you have to come and see it. It's one of the only undammed rivers in California. It's one of the great salmon strongholds of the Pacific Coast. And thanks to the Land and Water Conservation Fund, uh, this watershed has been protected not just for my constituents, but for the many, many people that come from all over the country, all over the world, to see and experience it. So let's make sure that tradition continues. Let's do the right thing and finally guarantee full funding for the LWCF. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to another Republican partner in this great bipartisan effort, Congressman Lee Zeldin. Most importantly, as far as thank yous, I really want to thank all of you. I have seen a lot of causes through the years come up short because of a lack of unity, a lack of planning, uh, people having their own strategies and going their own separate ways uh, and not convincing enough members of Congress, House and Senate to co-sponsor a bill, to champion a bill, to vote for a bill. But you all are unified and you all are stronger for it. And there is no way that we would have seen that reauthorization recently passed and signed into law if not for you. Members of Congress, uh, up here, we, uh, we're, we're riding your coattails. Uh, you, you are the ones who day in and day out are knocking on every single door in 535 doors across America as one strong unified force. For us, uh, we are, we're talking to colleagues. We're getting more support amongst members of the House and the Senate. And that's why we got reauthorization uh, done but really it wouldn't have happened if not for you all sticking together with one fantastic plan. I represent New York One, uh, the greatest congressional district in America. Uh, we're, sorry, we're, I got a niche in my throat. I'm sorry. We're located on the uh, east end of Long Island, and this district is almost completely surrounded by water. In my home county of, of Suffolk, we have 65 parks that receive funding from this program. For, for us, we love our parks, we love our beaches, we care about plans for coastal resiliency, uh, we see the impacts of rising sea levels. Uh, everything that gets uh, discussed behind us or in a committee room with great debate, uh, we see its impacts uh, each and every day hitting as close to home as possible. For us, and really on behalf of uh, my constituents, I want to say thank you as well to all of my colleagues and to all of you. Because as Brian Fitzpatrick pointed out, uh, this is over 50% underfunded. Uh, and as our colleagues in the Senate and the House have pointed out uh, many times uh, through the years in trying to get the reauthorization done, this is funded in theory very responsibly to save tax dollars, to reinvest uh, money that is brought in elsewhere 
and put towards the best of use through the LWCF. This is a program that is about efficiency. This is about our environment, our way of life, who we are, and for the future, for our kids, for our grandkids, for those great parks at home from whatever congressional district you come from. Uh, it's for them to be able to have what we can tell them stories of, of great memories of growing up, of that great park close to home. So to preserve what we cherish, to preserve what we love, we need to rededicate ourselves to this effort. We celebrate a reauthorization, uh, but we recommit to fully funded. And we encourage all of our colleagues to get off the sideline if they're there now and to help us with this effort to join us and ride your hotels towards a big win of fully funding LWCF for the many years to come. Uh, at this time, uh, it is my great pleasure to uh, introduce Jenny Brandt. Uh, Jenny is the Deputy Director of Conservation Programs at the Hispanic Access Foundation. Let's give her a big warm welcome. Thank you. My name is Jenny Brandt. I'm the Deputy Director of Conservation Programs at Hispanic Access Foundation, where our mission is to bridge and establish access, um, access for a path of, for development for the rise of Latino leaders and elevate their voices in areas where they're underrepresented. Um, first and foremost, Hispanic Access would like to thank and applaud uh, Rep. Van Drew for making one of his first major actions um, as a member of Congress to move forward full and dedicated funding for Land and Water Conservation Fund, which has benefited n nearly every county in the country. Um, additionally, we'd also like to thank Chairman Grijalva for being a, a lead on this legislation to provide full and permanent funding um, to LWCF at $900 million annually. For over half a century, LWCF has served to protect America's greatest treasures from national parks of outstanding beauty like Grand Canyon and Grand Tetons to historic sites embodying our nation's past such as San Antonio Missions, El Camino Real de Tierra Adentro, a historic trade route between Mexico City and San Juan Pueblo in New Mexico, Roberto Clemente State Park in New York, um, the Gettysburg Battlefield, and Monroe Elementary School in Kansas, the school attended by Linda Brown um, of Board v. Board of Brown v. Board of Education. LWCF has successfully safeguarded countless acres of natural resources, greatly enhanced access to public lands, preserved our historical legacy, and even supported local economies by boosting outdoor recreation and tourism. To this day, LWCF has helped protect more than 100 national battlefields in 42 states, supported over 42,000 parks um, and recreation projects across the country, in addition to helping protect more than 2.2 million national um, parks. LWCF is particularly important for Latino communities that traditionally lack equitable access to green and open spaces. The program increases local, state, and national parks for Latino communities, increasing opportunities for physical opportunity, um, physical activity, places to gather with their families and communities, and recreational activities. For many Latinos and other diverse communities, sites funded through LWCF provide their only means to experience the outdoors because the program directly supports local and municipal parks and projects. In fact, 94% of Latinos see public lands, such as national parks, forests, monuments, and wildlife areas as an essential part of their state economies. Land, Water, and Comunidad is a short film by Hispanic Access Foundation which explores the relationship that Latinos um, across the nation have with their land and water conservation sites. What they mean to them, how they enjoy them, and what impact it would have if these lands weren't available. Since its passage in 1965, the Land and Water Conservation Fund has been one of the nation's greatest tools for providing access and helping to preserve lands and waters that we love. We hope that all of our representatives understand the importance of providing permanent full funding for this crucial program for rural, urban, and Latino communities, as well as um, the positive impact these places will have for all Americans in the future generations. Great. Next up will be Patricia Rojas Ungar, Vice President of Government Affairs for Outdoor Re in Recreation Industry. Thank you so much, and it's it's amazing to see so many people show up for this event, and I think it's a testament to the bipartisan support that this legislation has and that this program has across the country. Um, let me first applaud Chairman Raul Grijalva and Re Representatives Van Drew, Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick, and Zeldin 
for leading the introduction of this critical bill. Now that LDFCF is permanently authorized, we must ensure that the program receives the intended purpose, uh, the intended funding of $900 million every year for our open public spaces, guaranteeing access to the outdoors for all Americans, no matter where they live. These dollars are critical to fueling the $887 billion outdoor recreation economy. That's who the Outdoor Industry Association represents, the suppliers, the manufacturers, and the retailers of outdoor gears and products. And we can tell you that our consumers are enjoying the benefits of the Land and Water Conservation Fund, and they leave their voting cards at the door. They go out and they fish and they ski and they paddle and they enjoy the benefits of bipartisan legislation like the Land and Water Conservation Fund. And I think that's a testament, again, to why we have this great bipartisan group here today. Um, the fact is that LWCF has been a tremendous success. For 54 years, it's been increasing opportunities to get us outside. We need Congress to stop diverting funds from the program and spend them in the places that need the dollars to protect our lands and water. The outdoor recreation industry is growing and we want every American to have access to opportunities to participate in full outdoor recreation activities from the backyard to the backcountry. And that means more close to home parks and public green spaces for underserved communities. It means completing our national parks, forests, and wildlife refuges so visitors can enjoy the adventures that await them in these public lands. In Colorado, where OIA is headquartered, we can see examples of this balance between local and federal projects, the important role that LWC, LWCF plays in investing in the outdoors. In Denver, LWCF funding in, is investing in Bombello Open Space, a new five-acre city park which will provide much-needed green space, environmental education opportunities, and unique recreational experiences to the 42,000 nearby residents. LWCF has also protected lands at one of the entrances to Rocky Mountain National Park. From a family who wished to incorporate their lands into the park rather than allow it to be developed. Over 90% of LWCF funding has gone towards providing public access. Access to public lands to hike, swim, paddle, camp and fish. Other recreation activities all depend on the protection of this place. Program that needs the dollars authorized in the Dingle Act, and this bill will get that done. We must fulfill the promise of LWCF to invest the full 900 million in conservation and increase the recreational access with dollars from offshore drilling. Thank you so much for including the outdoor industry today. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce. Tiernan Sittenfeld, Senior Vice President for Government Affairs from the League of Conservation Voters. Thank you so much, Patricia. I'm Tiernan Sittenfeld with the League of Conservation Voters, and it is truly a day with this incredible group of congressional leaders, with this powerful coalition, and with all of you who worked so hard to bring about a major victory earlier this year when Congress passed a huge public lands package, the biggest in a decade, and the centerpiece of that was, was permanent reauthorization of the Land and Water Conservation Fund. This was a huge win, and the win happened because Congress overwhelmingly supported the Land and Water Conservation Fund. The reason that Congress was so supportive is that there is tremendous public support across the country for LWCF and for all of the benefits that it provides, whether it is more access to national parks and other public lands, whether it is creating more parks in urban spaces that are lacking green space, whether it's preserving habitat for fish and wildlife. This was truly a major win. It would not have happened without the leadership of these members here today, especially Chairman Grijalva, and we're so happy to have this new pro-environment majority in the House of Representatives. So thank you to everyone for making this happen. Uh, but of course, we are advocates, and our work is not done, and we absolutely need to ensure that the Land and Water Conservation Fund get the full funding that it deserves. For far too long, funds that were supposed to go to LWCF, that were literally 
going to a fund called the Land and Water Conservation Fund were diverted elsewhere to the tune of $22 billion over many years. So it is long past time to ensure that rather than diverting this funding elsewhere, that it is going to important things that are so critical to our way of life, to the outdoor economy, to preserving our special places. That's why this legislation is so widely supported by many of the conservation groups here today, like the Wilderness Society, the Nature Conservancy, and the Trust for Public Lands. It's why the League of Conservation Voters, our CLCB partners, CHISPA, are all here today as part of our 13th annual Lobby Day, which we just kicked off. We are going to be fanning out across the hill doing 200 lobby visits, and we are going to be asking people fully fund at $900 million this, inc this incredibly important program to co-sponsor this bill. So thank you again to all of you. Thank you to this wonderful group of Congress and to my colleagues in the conservation movement. Thank you very much. Uh, the, the people that spoke today are available to anybody that wants to individually talk to them. And, or uh, wants to interview them individually. I want to thank again Mr. Van Drew uh, and the bipartisan, uh, the bipartisan effort that he's leading. That's the road to success. And uh, we're all very excited about the opportunity uh, to do something significant here. So thank you a lot for attending. Appreciate it. Thank you.